Right, the book has you um, put a temporary spindle in the tailstock, mount a rod between centers and use that to make your final ram for the tailstock, you know, the bore and that. But the quote, David Bowie in his role as Jareth the Goblin King, wait, I've got a much better plan. This is part of the reason Gingery recommends that is because the diameter for a spindle and for the tailstock ram is different, whereas for me it's the same diameter. So I don't need to finish the outside because it's already the right diameter. Sometimes you just get lucky. If I'm honest, I didn't actually expect that to work so that well. I'm going to do a pilot hole with a 6mm drill because that's the biggest size that my tool post can hold. That drill bit is not at the right height. But that should be enough of a pilot hole to get started. Plan D for drill press. Didn't want to use this because it'll mean set up. Oh, what an absolute mission. I think I may have to end up having to cut this off and because these drill bits are not going to reach through. The book says to make this stock about um, 101.6mm long from memory. I might make it 120 just to give myself a bit of tolerance. Right. This is a 16 degree centre gauge. Right. So this will go on there. One of the um, boring supports will, be, will support this at the other end. And I just have to make a lathe dog to clamp onto this, it will drive it. Alright, these will be the parts for the drive dog. For the longer one, I need a M8 bolt about there, a pair of bolts there, and oh, vaguely there ish. I'll wait to mark that one until I have a better idea, I think. Alright, one moment please. Alright, and the three holes in this one want tapping. Make the tools to make the tools to make the tools. Grab the M6 tap out of sheer habit. Add the cutting fluid and the tapping becomes a lot easier. Who knew? Right, I need, now I need to cut a V about 10mm wide, as close to the middle as I can get. Go inside, then go inside. I'm not stopping you. Right, this will need to clamp this. And that's my lathe dog. Let's see if that works now, shall we? Yep. The way 
way this works is that the um, workpiece is held on the centre that I carved into the end of the spindle there. That would, the contact with the spindle isn't enough to actually turn this though, which is where the slave dog comes in because the bolt is going through the face plate, so when the face plate turns, the bolt gets turned with it, and because it's clamped onto the workpiece, that turns the workpiece. What are you doing, cat? Go inside. Go on, it's nice and dry there and warmer. Yes, stick out, but I also don't want to clamp down on the flutes themselves. be wrong but I believe we have poked through and drilled a hole right through the whole thing. Alright I'm going to drill a part of this to the small diameter of the Morse taper at least as far as I can get it. The Morse taper is two and two and one eighth of an inch long. Why two and one eighth? Because historical reasons, that's why. Alright, in order to um, bore the bore out the taper, the book recommends moving the front of the piece yeah, back a bit across the bed, which should help turn the taper on it. I don't need to get the taper exactly right because I have a secret weapon. I do however need to get it vaguely on, on target. This is my secret weapon. Roughing reamer and I also have a um, fine finishing reamer as well. Alright, gonna do a bit more boring because I didn't take out enough material. Okay, believe it or not, I actually don't have enough stuck out. I know, I was shocked too. Yep, I'm getting roughly the taper I want, I just need to widen it out. Right, I'm using the lathe dog as a set of V-blocks now. Hey Chirpy, I did find a use for that Irwin tap handle. It's just the right size for this. I'm really not worried about cutting the taper too wide. As long as the actual taper itself is the right amount of taper, if it seats too deep, I can always take some off the end here. As you may recall, I left about 20 mil or so of meat on the actual length of, of this round stock itself, so that's why I'm really not worried about having to cut some off because I designed for that, or measured for that, I should say. I've got the had the set over reasonably right on the lathe when I was cutting the taper on the lathe itself so at the moment I th believe I'm pretty much just tidying up the surface with the reamers that's what I believe All right, let's go to the finishing reamer while I've got this set up I might just show you All right, that's how it's arranged the hole in the end of the round stock is um, seated on the cone that I turned. The lathe dog is clamped around the round stock, and the bolt going through it is driving, is being driven by the face plate. Side note: when you tap out the crud out of these things, 
tap it with the flared end down so you're tapping out of the flared end so I found that otherwise it'll compact oh I'd say that's done I can't detect any end play in it and it seats right solidly as in I need to poke it out the other end this end I'm not too worried about this end however I need an end bell to seat on there nicely so I might need to get out, get out the big sander and take this down so that it's a smooth circle all the way around put them back in their oil cloth or oil paper and they weren't expensive but they also weren't free either you recall this handle that I cast set quite a while ago and said it would come in useful this is what it will come in useful for book says to tap it as deep as it will go yep it did go all the way through I'm also going to need some M10 threaded rod as well the thought occurs to me maybe set this cutting to length before I need it so I don't have to sit there waiting for the bandsaw I'm only doing little turns because the tap is not happy about this also the thought occurs to me I might have to re ream the taper after this because there may be a couple of threads biting into the end of it which will deform the metal. I just turned down the focus, turned down this a little bit with the belt sander in the cordless drill, similar to how I make with the gib screws, except along the flat rather than making a cone. So hopefully that'll mean that this will turn a bit better than it than that other one jolly did. <laughs> think this. Well, the plan is to use the um, tailstock ram as an arbor. These supports have been surprisingly useful. You may recall I turned this to go in the tailstock. It was the wrong bit of stock. I should have used this because it's wider. Well, I got about 10 millimeters diameter to take off there, and I've done two. right side it's now the right diameter too I just have to turn that shoulder nicely I am not sure how I'm going to do this one Deburr this a bit. How am I going to the hole was actually a wee bit oversized for M4. Now for the joy of drilling the other side. The drill size for these taps is 3.3 millimeters, and I have the choice of either a 3 millimeter drill or a 3.5 millimeter drill. If I drill a hole that's too small, there's a good chance the tap will break. If I drill a hole that's too big, 
Well, the threads might be a bit loose, but it'll be better than a broken tap. Okay, I need to cut a slot along the length of this. The bandsaw will take halfway to forever. So I may need the angle grinder. Putting on the mask for this one. Right, I'm hand drilling this because there is no way I would get it mounted in the press. I need to thread an M10 hole in there, so 8.5mm drill. Ah, M10 tap now. Right, a little bit of gravy. After all the work I went to to make that, I bet not have lost it. <sighs> I've been putting this off, but now I've got to drill this out. Be right back. Yeah, I need to widen this groove in here. Well, it's working. It's just unbelievably stiff. It feels like it's moving a lot more freely. My theory is that this hole here isn't quite wide enough and the shaft of the threaded rod is dragging on it. Right, it's currently 6mm, I'm going to take it up to 6, 6.5. Alright, hopefully that has it. that's moving a lot more freely. Might just tidy up the bottom of this while I've got the handle off. Oh that is nice now. It must have been the problem. The end of it's still sticky as anything but hopefully time will fix that. Whoo! Tailstock is done! Yay! How about that? Now let's tidy up and get a glimmer shot, shall we? All that's left to do per the book is now the permanent spindle. Replace this temporary one, from what I understand. Because now I can mount stuff between centres here, which should be a lot more rigid with tailstock support. As opposed to things flapping in the breeze like they were before. So, oh, super happy about how much we've gotten done. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.